Let's say as Raymond Wilson, reflecting God's glory. What a wonderful day the Lord has given us. We're rejoicing. We're happy. We're praising God, glorifying Him. God has blessed us mightily through the Word of God and through the power of God and through the Holy Spirit. We're thankful for the blood that He shed on the old cross of Calvary that we might have eternal life. Thankful for the Word of God. I'm thankful that God gave us the Word, the Scriptures, the uh, inspired Word of God that we might glorify His blessed holy name. The Bible said that we might know more about Him and more about the power of the resurrection. And so we want to know more about our Lord and our Savior. We want to know more about God the Father. In the book of Ephesians, he said that we have been blessed by God the Father. And then we find we have the blood that has covered our sins, forgot about our sins, and they'll never remember those sins anymore. Thank God they forgot about that. They're buried. And Jesus said in the book of John, oh John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God which comes to take away our sins. And so God not only buried them and put them behind his back, but he said he took them away. I'm glad, thank God, he took away those old sins, that old nature that I had. I'm glad, thank God, he's still taking them away through the atoning blood of the Lamb of God. It's the Lord Jesus that shed that blood that we might have an atonement for our sins. And surely we need daily. God said, forgive us daily. We come before God. Give us our daily bread. That's the word of God. Forgive us of our trespasses. That's daily trespasses against God. And for that, we give him the praise and the honor. I want to talk today about the uh, doctrines of uh, statement that God has laid upon my heart and I've been using for many years and thinking about the doctrinal statement and I know the word doctrine sometimes people say we well, don't want to hear that old doctrine but uh, you can't be saved without the doctrine of salvation uh, and you can't be saved without the doctrine of Christology can't have the knowing power of the Holy Spirit of God without pneumatology and we like theology theology is a doctrine of God uh, and so it's doctrine that you and I to look for and we read the word of God we study the doctrines of God's holy word in other words a plan that God has laid out for us and so we chose some scripture today in the book of 1 Thessalonians <laughs> excuse me uh, first that's Lord he said but I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep that ye sovereign not even as others which have no hope and so he said for if we believe and so that's what we want to deal with today we believe he said but if we believe and I believe the Word of God is the inspired Word of God that Jesus died rose again that's Christology even so them also which sleep or die in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain uh, until the coming of the Lord shall not present, prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain uh, <coughs> are alive uh, and remain. They shall be caught up together to be with them in the clouds uh, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, and that's because of what I just read. Wherefore, comfort ye one of these words, or comfort ye one another with these words that God has placed. And so it's comforting for our soul and our mind when we think about the doctrines of God and think about the principles of God and think about what do we believe. And so sometimes I just like to renew what I believe. Let the word of God flow through my heart, my mind, and my soul so I know exactly what I believe. When somebody asks me, what do you believe? I want to be able to tell them what I believe. And so as we begin to think about this and think about what God has laid out for us, I, I thought about this and thought about the uh, doctrine of creation or the sovereignty of the creator of God. I believe that the power of God is what created the heavens and the earth. There was a time when God uh, came before uh, the earth and the world just simply called it out. He called out the, uh, by his words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so we know Lord Jesus is the Word of God. But in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so we know that God is the Creator, 
They try to explain it away. They try to talk about a big bang in many other ways that they think uh, that the creation came. But there's a better explanation. Some says we are formed out of different things. But there's a better explanation that's easier to believe than all of the things that they come up with. Just simply believe that God, God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Uh, and God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father, created they simply spoke into existence the heavens and the earth three heavens that we know of Paul was caught up into the third heaven and so we know there's three heavens and in the creation of the earth and so we believe in the God that has created the heavens and the earth talking about all of the great things that God I read in the book of Nahum where God has control of all things. Why? Because he created all things. There he has power over the storms, power over the earth, power over the wind. And anything that comes up, God's in control of it. As the disciples were on the storm, on the sea and the storm came by, we know that God controlled it. He said, peace be still, and it calmed the storm. God's able to bring the storms, and God's able to stop the storms. And so we know that God is the creator of all things and so for that we like to rejoice today and, and just shout a while and say thank God Almighty God is my creator and God created all things so I believe in the sovereignty of the creation of God how God created then I believe uh, in the inspired word of God uh, I believe this Bible to be God's holy word I believe it's God's inspired word I use an old King James version of the word of God uh, when uh, I begin to study about the origin of the Bible and how we have the Bible as we have today Jerome uh, had a great man of God uh, and how he uh, translated into the Latin and then from the Latin into the English language that we have today and so I'm thankful I know there's many other uh, uh, different types and sources of uh, translation of the Word of God from the Greek and the Latin uh, and then into the English that we have but into the Hebrew and the Greek and then we know that it has been tr translated into uh, maybe a Russian language or French language or many other languages like that but I'm sticking with the old King James Version of God's Holy Word where God created the heavens and the earth God said the heavens and earth might pass away but my word it'll stand it stood through the time of eternity God has had the word of God and God has allowed you and I to learn just a little bit more as we read as we meditate said Joshua be strong in the Lord meditate day and night on the word of God and if we study it and learn I was lost for over 30 years but when God touched my heart I had never read a complete chapter in the Word. I had never understood the Word of God, but it was a day that God touched my heart, birthed me into the family of God, that God was able to unveil the Word of God. And now I can look at the Word of God and through the power of the Holy Spirit of God, God allows us to see into the precious Word of God that we might know and understand what God has said. God used parables and God used metaphors and types throughout the Word of God. He used the metaphor in the New Testament and the disciples said, Lord, uh, why is it uh, uh, that the world can't understand? And he said, some things comes only by you and I coming before him and God opening our eyes. The gods of this world has blinded the minds of those that are lost and they cannot understand the depths of the Word of God. They may understand some of the language that's there, but never the deep thing, never the spiritual things as God has laid out for you and I. So I believe in the sovereignty of the Creator. I believe in the inspired Word of God. I believe God the Holy Ghost uh, uh, inspired men to pin down the Word, and they pinned down exactly what God wanted pinned down. And now we have the canon of the Scriptures that you and I may rejoice. So I believe in creation of of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I believe in the Word of God to be the inspired Word of God. And then as we read through the Word, I believe in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Behold, the Lamb of God comes to take away the sins, and surely He did. He came to this earth, born of a virgin, uh, and walked on the face of this earth, performed many miracles on the face of this earth. Uh, and we know He caused the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak, the lame to walk, uh, and He cast out many demons and devils. Uh, but thank God Almighty God, the Lord Jesus Christ, came to this earth uh, and shed the blood on that old cross of Calvary that you and I 
might have redemption for our soul. The only way I know I'm saved is through the blood, faith in the blood. For by grace are you saved through faith. That's not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. God gave us faith enough to believe uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ shed his blood that we might have this eternal life. We rejoice today. Thank God for the blessed God that God has allowed uh, the blood of the Lamb of God to make redemption for whosoever will. I believe whosoever will can come, call upon the name of the Lord God. Uh, and the Lord Jesus, fin Jesus finished his work. When he stood on the old rugged cross, he said, it's finished, it's done. And now we know that he's now seated at the right hand of God. He's our intercessor. He's our high priest. And we glorify him today in thinking about that high priest that you and I can come before him on that daily basis and ask forgiveness. And God said he would forgive us. And so we believe in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. We also believe in the personal work of the Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit came. Jesus said before he left, he said, I must go away, but if I go away, I'll send the comforter back. Well, we know on the day of Pentecost, as we read through the Word of God, uh, that the Holy Spirit of God came like a mighty rushing wind. The fire of God came. Uh, and you and I look at back at that, and we see the origin of the church and how God uh, breathed upon those people <laughs> in that early church and how Peter stood and preached and proclaimed the Lord. He simply taught what he believed, what he had seen through uh, the course of life of the Lord Jesus. He walked with him. And as he walked with him, God brought him through many different phases and he saw many great miracles happen. And now we find in Acts 2, after God had filled him with anointing power of God, uh, uh, that there are 3,000 souls saved and born the family of God. Uh, and we give God praise. Boy, don't you you know there's rejoicing in the prince of the angels over one soul it would say how much more will those angels in the prince of those angels uh, be able to praise God and glorify God uh, and shout of victory and saying worthy is the Lamb of God 3,000 souls for the Lamb then a little while later there was 3,000 5,000 souls saved and so we thank God for the souls uh, then multitude and then multitudes were saved uh, in that early church they were being saved by the hundreds and by the thousands that God has opened up the door for them and they were birthed into the family of God. God's still in the saving business. God is still saving souls today. Whosoever will, let him come. Let him be born in the family of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. The only way a person can be saved is by God touching them. And so we believe in the experience of the new birth. Thank God for the new birth. I'm experiencing that uh, as when the day that I bowed before God called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and I experienced in my heart there was something that happened that night that I had never experienced before. The power of God came into my heart uh, and I said there's been a hundred pound lifted off of my shoulder when I was born into the family of God. Uh, I was saved because God gave me a verse of scripture throughout the pages of God's holy word. The Bible said we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible said there's none righteous, no, not one. But he said, but God commended his love toward us. And while we were yet sinners, God died for us. The Lord Jesus shed his blood. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And God provided that for us today. I believe salvation is for whosoever will. Jew, Gentile, bond or free. Any person can call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved and birthed into his family if they'll simply believe the word of God. Again, uh, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. Uh, by, for by grace are you saved through faith. So it's all by the grace of God. God giving us faith that we might trust in Him. And so I'm glad that God said if we just believe in our heart that God raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And so I believe in the experience of salvation because I have experienced salvation. I know it changed my life. There was reconciliation came over me. Redemption came over me. Justification came. Sanctification came. That I was born into the family of the Lord and the Holy Ghost began to teach us and lead us and guide us 
through that. I believe in the throne room of heaven. I believe when Jesus died on the old rugged cross of Calvary, ascended back to the heaven, sat down at the right hand of God. I believe that throne's in heaven today with the blood on the mercy seat. Holy Ghost is there to ever make intercession for you and I. And we give him praise today and thank God he's our intercessor. He's there when those times of need, when we come before God and God answers our prayer and we know he's on the throne. God said there's an altar in heaven in those prayers that we send up every morning or every evening or every night when you pray. Daniel prayed three times a day. David prayed three times a day. And it wouldn't hurt us to pray. Paul said he prayed those three times a day and he said he prayed without ceasing. I, I'm glad, thank God, we have breath enough to pray without ceasing. Just keep God on your mind. Keep fellowshipping with God. Keep talking with God. Have that prayer time with God because God, the Holy Spirit of God, came to convict you and I and God on the throne of glory ever make intercession for you and I and so we're happy joy unspeakable and full of glory peace of peace all understanding we're shouting today this is the day the Lord's made we will be glad we will rejoice we will shout we will praise the living Lamb of God I'm glad thank God I, I believe in a throne room in heaven I, and I also believe there's a second coming of the Lord and Isaiah prophesied 700 years before the Lord Jesus came to this earth. And we know that he was born of a virgin, walked on the face of this earth. Then he promised before he went back, he said, I not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those which are asleep. And so he gave us in this chapter that we've read a portion of it. We know that God will return. Jesus said in the upper room, he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Of course, Thomas said, how are we going to know the way? Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the light. I am the door. He is the lamb. Oh, I, I know uh, in the, back in the book of Exodus where Moses come before God and God said, just tell him I am. I am. Whatever you need, God, I am, is there to fulfill. Whatever need you might have, if it's in the will of God, not all your wants may not be fulfilled, but the need. My God shall supply all of your need, one need, whatever it might be, whatever that is, that need, by, according to his riches and glory. And so God is there <coughs> to supply our needs according to that riches and glory. So he's coming back just like he said. I believe the Bible to be true. And I believe one day he's coming back. When they, <coughs> those men of Galilee stood looking up <coughs> on the Mount of Olives. And the, as he ascended up, the two in white says, Why you men stand gazing up this same Jesus you see going up? He's coming back in like manner. Uh, the doctrine, I believe, is eschatology. I believe in ecclesiology and eschatology. And I believe in those ology boys. And I thank God Almighty that God gave us the scripture that one glorious day he's coming back. i tell you the truth. I'm looking for him to come. Just like he said in the word of God, I believe it won't be long till we look up. God said, look up your redemption draweth nigh. And we're looking for the Lord to come most any day. Now, perilous times are here. Hard times are here. But God said, I'm coming back for the bride. I'm coming back for his children. I believe in the eternal kingdom of God. I believe that God will set up a kingdom just like he said in the word of God. Thy kingdom come. And we pray, thy kingdom come. And we know Ezekiel talked about building that temple. So I trust you've been saved more than the family of God, uh, sit down somewhere and just think about what do you really believe? Do you believe in God? Do you believe in the moral? Do you believe in the standards? Do you believe the word of God to be true? Sit down and write down in a piece of paper what you believe and compare it with the word of God and see if it compares to what God has said in his book in Jesus' holy name.